think yeah uh, sure I'm, yeah i'm happy to do a, a quick intro you know to be honest um like i think there's probably other people here who are in better touch with what's going on with the community and stuff uh which is great to see like you know it was just the other day i looked on twitter and there was like a weekly recap of nftx and it's like wow i had nothing to do with that and so it's awesome to see that uh but yeah i'm i'm just trying to focus a lot on development stuff for this week and possibly a little bit of next week uh, there's like a lot of questions about people trying to mint the d2 tokens and like are that amm and um, also creating new funds so i'm going to try and get all that working and then i'm also going to try and like uh, well i will also write up a bunch of documentation uh, that hopefully some other community leaders can kind of break down and distill and make into tutorials. So that's what I'm focusing on. Um, and I, I don't know if people saw, but I'm kind of like trying off Twitter this week, but if anyone has questions, feel free to DM me anytime and I'll uh, do my best to help. So I think that was a pretty good intro of like what you've been doing. Cause like we can't all see that. It's kind of like behind the scenes, but you're still doing work. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I promise I'm working, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's huh. also nice to to see that yeah, things are also moving independently of you as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Well, I've yeah. been on proof of work. <laughs> <laughs> and I think uh, yeah, we can thank uh, Javery, uh, Chop Chop, and uh, Addy Dust for making some content. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Chop's been uh, busy during Twitter. Like really working hard at that spamming people. It's a nice uh, <laughs> engagement. Yeah, so yeah. I, I I also wanted to to recap on the launch. So like we've been uh, launched for about a month now, and uh, liquidity for about two weeks, and we just launched on Sushi. And to me, everything regarding that has been going well. Uh, in the treasury, we have seven hundred fifty eight Avastars, seven hundred fifty four kitties, two hundred six punks. 76 axes, 30 glyphs, 14 joys, uh, 10 art blocks, and one joy toy. We also have uh, 600 ether left to launch the other funds. Uh, and then we have the sushi LP that's about like 1k ether and like uh, 50k NFTX. And we have 817 holders, which is uh, growing. Like the last time I checked, it was like five, four, six hundred. Wow. So yeah, it's also nice to see that the holders are growing. So it means that uh, we're getting more decentralized over time, hopefully. So yeah, does anyone uh, have any questions just regarding the launch or uh, regarding what Alex has done? Uh, I have one comment, by the way, on, uh, <laughs> on, the, on the LP side of things. Uh, I use a tool which is called Croco Finance, but because of the uh, migration from uh, Uni to Sushi, that platform is a bit uh, reporting weird rewards, uh, especially on the fees. So uh, if you use the same platform to check out like how much revenue is LPing actually giving the DAO, uh, I think it's false. It's reporting false numbers. So for instance, the Punk ETH pool reports that there's 600K in rewards, which I don't think is true. Uh, it feels kind of too much. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's too much. Yeah. yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but that's definitely too <laughs> yeah. much. So I think uh, they actually uh, include the switch. So the migration, uh, they, I think they think it's like listed for free. And then the whole liquidity pool is considered as uh, fees. So just a note, like if you use that tool, it's, uh, it's false. Okay. I have a question about the, the raise. Is are all the bounties like officially over? It's very low. Wait, I uh, can't hear you. Um, I, I think I, I think I heard the question. I think I, I heard it coming through on Finesse's mic through the speaker <laughs> somehow. But uh, anyway, yeah, not all the funds are officially open. Like uh, the D two funds haven't even been created yet except for punk uh, and like we'll be rolling out the rest of the d2 funds like axie avastar kitty etc um, and then actually those are the only other d2 funds we have lined up now but yeah we'll be rolling those out and then like also like 
these other funds, they are up and running and they're working. Like, like for instance, I'm holding to Punk Zombie right now. I'm not worried about it, like what the price is trading at, because I know at the end of the day, I can always trade that in and get to zombie crypto punks, right? Uh, but for like the D2 funds like Punk, um, I people have been messaging me and like saying like, should I be buying this? Is it overpriced? Um, and like right now, I wouldn't recommend that people hold large amounts of Punk or other D2 funds until we have the front end up and working, uh, unless you're like a very advanced user. Uh, and you understand what you're doing just because like the market's not acting totally efficiently right now because our front end's not really working as well as it should be which is on me so yeah we're we're kind of in this like middle state right now where most of our funds are launched and if you're an advanced user you're welcome to play around with them like you're not going to break anything but i wouldn't recommend most users to start aping in yet Yeah, I actually don't think that was uh, State's question, but that was still relevant information. He, he, Sorry, he, he corrected himself in chat. Uh, but as far as I know, the, the bounties are 100% over. They're, you can't fill bounties anymore. That's uh, correct, right, Alex? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's totally correct. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> went on a little educational rant there. But yeah, the bounties are totally done. Some people message me about that too. And like what I what I tell uh, most people is that like you know if you feel like you your project might have missed out on bounties, um, like if you have an NFT project, like don't worry because we still do plan on having farming and farming will be an opportunity for a lot of projects to hopefully get rewards. Um, like you know a project like Art Blocks by like Snowfro, it's like we didn't have um, a bounties for an Art Blocks project, but like we may well um, give rewards during farming. So that's something that people can look forward to, but we haven't decided on yet. Yeah, it's something uh, interesting to keep in mind like for like further proposals and governance, like what we can do with that. And uh, so I had some time allotted to talk about like uh, the previous week, but I think we've already covered that. The only thing uh, that we really haven't talked about is uh, a week in review. And uh, I mean, we're gonna talk about that later, but uh, if anyone has any questions, like if anything we've talked about now and uh, if you have ideas uh, any thoughts and if you've seen like issues where we currently have and any advantages you think we have in the market uh, if like we can press those to be more efficient and then also reduce our inefficiencies i think we can get a like a, an edge very quickly yeah i agree with that i'm happy to just like Kind of let the let the conversation sit for like ten seconds and wait if anyone wants to speak up or have any questions. Not really for mine. It, it's also like a moment where like you can see like anything you've you have from like your perspective that you think others might have not seen. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if anyone has a galaxy brain, it's, it's now or never, you know. <laughs> No, I think one thing, one topic I think is uh, useful to get started on uh, thinking about at least or like uh, getting talks about on the forum is uh, the farming that uh, Alex mentioned because it's quite a big task to do correctly, uh, especially on the emissions. It's 20% of all supply. So it's quite critical that it's done right and it's uh, planned well. Uh, so I think that's one topic that I would push for to get started talking about uh, because it opens up a lot of opportunities for NFTX to, for instance, draw new projects uh, to launch their NFTs uh, through the liquidity farming uh, and anything else like people that missed out on the community race, get another chance, things like that. I think that's a quite a big topic, which probably needs to get started, uh, like not from an implementation point of view, but more uh, like the giga brains on math, uh, having their share and thought about uh, what the best, like best practices is on uh, on emissions of farming and how, how that can help the uh, like general NFTX problems that we have. Uh, such as liquidity for NFTs. Uh, I think that, uh, yeah, um, I wouldn't mind uh, just jumping in real quick on that note, um, because like farming is definitely a big question um, that we have. 
and I think it's great if people start discussing it. Um, yeah. I don't think we should necessarily settle on anything final yet. Um, mm -hmm. And I expect what we settle on will probably be some sort of hybrid of different opinions. Uh, but just to like, so everyone can kind of be on the same page as me, um, like really the, the two big things that are in my brain about like what I'd like to see in terms of like features and like a working product um, in the next couple months. Um, one of them is like, uh, is basically our own, our own uh, trade aggregator. So like right now, like the, the markets rely on arbitrage, right? So if like I'm buying, if I want to buy like, let's say 10 punk basic, um, there's a chance that I might push the punk basic price above what I could actually buy regular crypto punks for. Right. Um, and like the larger my order is the better chance of that happening. So like if I had a very large order, what I would have to do right now is I'd break it up and I'd like break it up over, you know, a day or so. And I'd let arbitragers kind of do the work in between, uh, but that, that's not great. So like what I, I think would be awesome is if we have our own aggregator and then like our aggregator, you know, just like, I mean, the base part could even be a fork of something else. Uh, but really, the point it would do is the aggregator would take that into consideration. So it would say, like, OK, this person wants to buy, like, 10 punk basic. So, like, let's see how much that would cost. And then, like, let, now let's look at, like, what's available on OpenSea or on Larva Labs, right? So it's basically like an aggregator, like anything else. But it would also include um, ERC-721 liquidity sources like Larva Labs and OpenSea. Um, so that's one thing that would be great if we could have in the future. And like one reason that would be great is it kind of solves our liquidity problem. Because if you're drawing liquidity from an actual NFT market, then even if you push the price up, let's say 5%, it's not actually slippage. What's actually You're literally pushing the whole market up. Um, because you're moving the NFTs with it. So I, I think that that feature, like this aggregator, might take like a month or six weeks, <coughs> excuse me, and it would be really great if we could have that when farming is ready. Um, the, the other thing that I'm thinking about is just fund creation. And I think right now, like the process of creating funds isn't that excellent. Um, the front end definitely needs some work. I, I would love to have like, a, you know, a very easy to use wizard type interface. Um, and I'd also like us to kind of outline what sort of gas reimbursements people can expect um, if they spend a lot on the fund. And, you know, I, I think that should also relate to how successful the fund is. Uh, but those are all things, you know, I just wanted to let everyone know that those are, you know, things on my mind. And it probably does relate to farming in the sense that it would be optimal if those things are done before farming begins. But, yeah. you know, who knows? Yeah, so I'm personally in agreement with you. I think we should build as opposed to farm, but uh, I mean, that's up to governance anyways, like how we prioritize. So in any yeah. case, we, we build during choices. So that's just how the process will go. And uh, we can't know right now, but it just depends on how the discussion on discourse will be and which brains uh, talk about what first. True. So I also wanted to talk about um, past proposals that already went through and then uh, um, upcoming proposals and things that are on discourse. So uh, we already passed the mission statement and the code of conduct. I think uh, no one right now has any issues with that, but that was uh, quite uh, conscientious during uh, its passing. And uh, I think it's an example of like what we can or cannot do regarding quorum. And uh, I'd like to have more thoughts regarding like what is our quorum requirement for our next proposals, and uh, we can use that as data for opinions. Like, do you guys think this was enough to pass something or not? And like, uh, we can talk more about that later. But uh, I think it's very important to look at what we already have passed because that was an issue of discussion, and many people were not like they were adamantly against it publicly. So it's it's very interesting to look at. Uh, we also have the sushi swap. Uh, proposal and that's passed now. I don't think there's any issues with that. No. Uh, and uh, I think it also even increased relations with the sushi swap team. So that's a net value add, regardless. And then the rebrand is uh, all chop. Uh, yeah, I'll, so. I'll uh, dive a bit deeper in that in uh, in my uh, parts. Yep. 
So that that's passed, and I think uh, we're all okay with Chop uh, leading us on that. And uh, I also want again to thank Adidas, the Chop Chop, and Javery for the piece they did for a weekend review. So content is definitely not my thing. So it's nice to have other people uh, take that uh, baton. Uh, and uh, so Alex, I also wanted uh, to know what were your thoughts on uh, past governance. Um, yeah. So. Um, oh, sorry. No, no, no. It was it was your turn. <laughs> okay, <laughs> my bad. Um, so yeah, I, I was actually just going to ask quickly. You were mentioning how um, you think it's important for us to like look back at like our historical governance proposals. Do you mean just in a like a sense of like analyzing how things went, or do you also mean in a sense of like trying to make sure that past proposals set a precedent for future proposals? Uh, a, a bit of both, but uh, I was also like meaning at the, like looking at the numbers. Like, uh, uh, let me let me check the mission statement proposal, and then the code of conduct proposal. I think uh, were interesting for that. One second, they're loading. So uh, the mission statement had a four percent rejection. So I think like we can all agree that that's not a problem, uh, and it had a, a good amount of voting. But the code of conduct one had only forty k votes, but it had zero percent uh, no votes. So is that enough votes for us to consider that a, a proposal that can set a future precedent or not? Like, I, I think that's something we have to look at, like for setting framework when we think about setting precedents. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I guess we kind of figure it out as we go. Um, but I, yeah, I, I think that it's good to look at past precedent set, but it's I'm not the type of person that likes to get locked in either. Um, so like, yeah, just because, you know, we've passed the code of conduct, in my opinion, doesn't mean that that can't be updated or changed by new holders in the future. But definitely in the meantime, I would say that that's kind of the acting document that we should look to. Um, times of trouble or whatever. Whenever I, I mention any piece of past proposal, I only mean it in a current state, not in a future state. It, because okay. it, like you said, at any time, if another future proposal is passed to amend it or to completely reject it, then that I completely agree with that. But um, to take the example of uh, what happened with urine, so if a proposal would have passed correctly, like regarding all their quorum requirements for burning the keys and the keys were not burned, uh, I think that's an act that like cannot be, it, it's an irrevocable act. Like you can't go back in time with burnt keys. So yeah. in theory, there are some acts that set precedents that you cannot reverse. So uh, yeah. we also no, I, have I, I to totally, totally look at that agree. framework. Um, and I mean, it, even in that case, I, I would argue that even if the keys had been burned, you know, they could still migrate to a no, new token. But I, I also get what you're saying that like, there's definitely a difference between something happening on chain and just signaling for it on snapshot. Yep, exactly. And that's why I also wanted to like regarding that, like what are our requirements for what is off chain and what is on chain and uh, like, I think we also need to incentivize people to use Aragon voting more. I mean, okay. not for not for irrelevant votes. I mean, that's not necessary. But for like maybe start a vote with the purpose of having people vote to know how to do it if there is actually an urgent matter that needs to happen on chain. Because I think everyone knows how to vote on Snapshot, or it's rather intuitive. I mean, you can learn it very quickly. But Aragon is less that. Yeah, no, it, it's true. Um, and and like Aragon, I mean, preferably I, it's best if it's only, if people only propose things that we already are like pretty sure there won't be opposition against. Um, but yeah, like, you know, it's totally possible that one day, let's say a faction of the NFTX community doesn't like the result of a snapshot vote. So they go ahead with something on Aragon anyways, like, you know, transferring funds or, or something, right? Um, and, and the reality is like, yeah, snapshot, at least for now, it's, it's really only signaling. Whereas Aragon, that's actually where like control of the treasury funds happens. Um, and I, I don't think it's really necessary for us to 
um, have people start voting on Aragon on a regular basis, but I, I agree it's good for people to know how and feel comfortable to do it um, in case there's ever a governance attack or something. So yeah, you know, it might not be such a bad idea for us to have a tutorial on that or or something, or occasionally encourage people to like take a look and uh, participate. Yep, that, that was pretty much what I was getting at. Not necessarily regular governance, but just at least know how to do it in case that if it is needed, people know how. And uh, the next thing I wanted to get into, uh, which I'll let you talk about, is like a product framework and side projects. Yes, okay, cool. Um, so I, I guess I already talked a little bit about some of the things I'm focusing on in terms of product. Um, and like the side projects, I, yeah, I created that last week because I just realized that there were all these things um, I had pending that I, I would like to do, uh, but I don't really have the time to do. Uh, and so I created that page with Notion and people can go, they can check out these side projects. Um, basically, they're not, they don't have to get done right away, but it would be great if they did. Um, and most of them, it shouldn't require um, too much contact from me. Like it, it should be pretty possible for people to just kind of do it on their own. Um, so that's, that's great. I think it's a good opportunity for other community leaders to have a chance kind of making decisions um, for themselves and for like the organization in a, a situation that can't do too much harm. Um, and then it, it also just it frees me up to work on some of the more like highly prioritized stuff. Uh, and do you have any other product ideas? Because uh, I think we, we had previously talked about uh, arbitrage, but uh, as you said, like uh, efficiently aggregating solves that problem. But I still believe that even if you do that, there are still arbitrage opportunities, even if they become reduced over time, they still exist in theory. Yeah, totally sorry. Someone's playing music upstairs. <laughs> um, but yeah, absolutely. Like, And I, I agree. I think that like, I think that there's probably there's probably going to be use cases for NFTX that like I haven't even thought of, and perhaps other people haven't even thought of, um, because this is kind of uh, a, a new um, part of DeFi and NFT, like new arbitrage opportunities. Um, so I would like to listen to users and to like the community and what kind of features people are requesting, um, and I would love for you know advanced super users to come to NFTX to like do all their, you know, badass arbitrage, profit making activities. Uh, but for right now, we really just, I have to focus on just making sure that like the basics work and we have documentation for that. Um, so perhaps, I don't know, perhaps like we could start um, like, um, I think there's a, I think there's a site called like Upvoti or something like product requests or something and keep a, a list of features that people would like to see that aren't top level, but would, you know, be nice to have. I guess a public roadmap, sort of? Yeah, um, I guess I guess a roadmap should definitely happen soon. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I, I put in like the light paper, like I, I forget exactly what I called it, but it was basically like our upcoming roadmap. Yeah. Um, but now that about a month and a half has passed, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, after I get through all this stuff this week, I'll try and, along with documentation, write something formal about how I plan to spend the next six weeks or so. Yeah, that's cool. I think, like, to add to that, uh, having something like Intercom, so uh, I don't know uh, if you know Intercom, uh, it can be quite useful to... Uh, find like bugs or issues people run into uh, on the front end uh, very fast. And we can also like offer support if people do run into problems instead of them like just not using the product and then either abandoning NFTX or having to find our Discord. I think uh, like if we agree on that, it's uh, like an easy, quick win to uh, find bugs. Yeah, I, I definitely think uh, having a, a public log uh, is very useful and you can also uh, maybe have bounties yeah 
Uh, yeah, I, I think um, I think like one of one of my major pet peeves with a lot of DeFi projects is just like user support, um, and even like going to the Discord. Often you don't get a response for days on end, um, yeah. and uh, that's you know now I'm kind of experiencing the other side of that now because I'm overloaded. But like we do have this large treasury, um, and so I would love to for us to put like support and user experience at like the very front of our like mission basically. Um, and try and like set a higher standard than other projects in the space so that like, it, and another reason for that is that some NFT users aren't necessarily as savvy as DeFi users. So it's just, it's a good thing to focus on, I think. And I, I'd really like to see that. And I love Intercom. I got a buddy who works there. So yeah, big, uh, big fan. So the, the last thing I wanted to uh, talk about or to ask about is uh, like what, D2 funds are we going to push next and or in what order are we thinking about you know, like we can also talk about that on discourse but in my mind I think it should be Axie but that's obviously up to a proposal but uh, yeah that's uh, for you Alex and after that uh, it's up to Chop to talk so yeah before we dive into that something else I'd actually like to bring up um, which some of you have probably seen on the forum I recommended like this stock split basically for the punk token um, a lot of people are confused because the punk token is trading at around like 25, 26 ETH. Um, and they think that that's supposed to be the floor price of all crypto punks. So I, I made this proposal like, you know, why don't we do a stock split basically and make it so like um, punk is actually like one one thousandth of what it currently is or something. So instead of being like 20, worth I don't know what ETH is worth these days, but instead of being like 30 grand, it would be like $30. Um, and so then, anyways, um, if we go ahead with that, and it seems like there was quite a bit of support for that, um, we might want to address that before we start rolling out new funds. Um, I'm pretty sure the way that we'll go about doing it is actually creating a new punk token and then sending that to all the current punk token holders. So it is kind of a process. Um, and it would probably be get it better to sort that out completely before we move forward with other D2 funds. But I'm curious if anyone has thoughts on this. Um, I, I was personally even thinking like maybe we should do it before the sushi migration, but uh, just to keep things simple, we, we left it. Yeah, the only, like, do, do we have powers to uh, uh, freeze uh, token transactions of the old one? Like, is there uh, admin powers to do that? Because if you don't, you can end up with a minute where there's still liquidity on the old token uh, and no liquidity on the new one. Shit. Well, I'm thinking even if even if not, like, what if, you know, people might still think the old one has value. Uh -huh. Yeah, and especially, like, knowing uh, CoinGecko and stuff won't be... Yeah, no, you're right. Okay, so... Um, I guess maybe the better way to do it is to do like um, like a, like you hand it in and you, you trade it in for the new one. Um, and then that way, even like, so it, it slowly goes out of circulation. Um, I think that's how like DAI moved over to multi-collateral. Um, mm -hmm. Well, what I'd say about that is, um, so I think Yam had multiple migrations and cover as well, so we can definitely look into that. And they have tradable tokens, which are volatile. So it's 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 going to go out of circulation, but it definitely takes time um, if we don't have control to be able to stop uh, all trading and all transactions. So that's definitely a concern. But what I was going to say is if it's not recognized on the front end, that definitely helps. Like if there's no liquidity and it's not on the front end, and there's less balancer pools over time, then there's no reason that uh, people wouldn't migrate. But one other concern is people can also arbit. So that's one thing you have to be careful about. So yeah, so one thing that, one thing that is nice is like we do have this layer of separation uh, between um, punk and the actual D1 funds, and that's Punk Core. So like the the actual balancer pool is called Punk Core, and then we take this Punk Core token and then we wrap it and make Punk. So the nice thing is that balancer pool can stay the same. It's just that um, we're gonna 
So instead of wrapping to create the old punk, we're gonna wrap to create this new punk, which has a di different decimal placing basically. Uh, so I, I think balancers should be all right. But yeah, other projects have done this, like Aave recently migrated from like Lend to their new token. So we, we can look at other at other projects and see what the standard is and like the norm. But I, I do think it's good if we get that, that sorted out before we move forward on other tokens. I mean, the first step to sorting that out is to us just agree, uh, you know, the community agreeing completely on the exact value of what the new punk token, like, you know, how much we're going to split that up by. Um, and then we can move forward with that. Yeah, I agree. So uh, I think uh, it's your turn now, Chuck. Cool. Yeah, yeah cool. Uh, I'll go through all the points and uh, just ask me whenever you have any questions during uh, when I talk. Uh, so essentially, uh, aside from all the stuff that's been done over the last weeks, I've got some things that I'm working on right now and that are going to take up most of my time, I think, or at least I feel. Uh, so the most important things right now, uh, together with Alex fixing the front end of uh, like creating the 1, the 2, uh, wrapping them is tutorials and documentation around it. Uh, so I'll heavily focus on creating guides for everybody to be aware that it's actually possible to mint more punk uh, uh, based on supplying liquidity, how to do that and how to use the front end step by step. Um, I think like creating some video content helps with that. And I'm uh, fairly uh, like known with the uh, Adobe suite, so I can do that. Uh, and I'll do a voice so anybody, anybody else wants to. Uh, but that's uh, like you can listen to my voice. So that's good. Uh, <laughs> I hope to fix that by the time Alex uh, pushes front end so that it uh, launches with actual tutorials. Uh, and I'll be in contact with Alex, like if I have any questions, I, I started uh, writing them already. Uh, but just to be sure, like nothing major changes uh, in the process, uh, I'll check with Alex. Um, same for documentation. So I believe Alex, you're also doing part of the documentation, right? Uh, so I'm uh, gonna assist there when I'm needed. Uh, so just drop me like a DM and I'll uh, like copy uh, copyright it further or check grammar and all that kind of stuff uh, on Gitbook. Um, so and then there's the formats uh, we've been working on. So Javery, uh, huge thank you for leading the weekend review. Uh, so the first one got pushed live on Monday. Uh, and essentially this format is built to give anybody that's not like involved with the DAO on a daily basis give them a good sense on what happened with nftx like what's the biggest things that happened what's the price doing what's things to look out for uh without having to spend like 24 hours on discord all day uh and i think the first edition was quite nice at least uh, from my perspective uh, like if you have any feedback uh feel free to give it now or on the feedback channel uh like if you don't feel like it now uh, so we can improve and like uh, write better content to get more people interested. Uh, then there's two tutorials uh, waiting or kind of blocked uh, before launching uh, on some uh, minor details. So they're almost ready. Uh, written by Javery and Eddie, I believe, right, uh, Javery? Uh, so one is how to acquire uh, NFTX using Coinbase, uh, but the wallet. Uh, so it's like a step-by-step -step guide how to get your first nftx and how to use that to part uh, partake in governance and then the second one is how to set up your metamask because that's a like a frequently asked question by people using metamask for the first time it's yo where's my token uh well it's there but it's really not there because it's not default uh listed so uh a tutorial on that would be nice uh so that's scheduled and like almost ready for launch. Uh, so we'll most likely go out uh, this week or otherwise next week. And then the two things I think are uh, very exciting actually is one, uh, preparing all the content for the other D2 launches. 
So in line with, uh, are we going to uh, launch XC first or uh, Avastars? Uh, we also have to have the actual content uh, to be ready before we launch that. So that got, uh, has to be prepared. So that's all in the Asana board uh, on the content uh, project. And then we need timings for that. So that's probably going to uh, be up to governance on when we launch and when we're ready to launch. Uh, and then the second thing, uh, which is going to be a big project uh, specifically for me, uh, which is related to the uh, governance proposal that passed already, is the next steps in rebranding. Because everybody knows, uh, or at least uh, most of us know, the logo isn't really optimal. So, so it's uh, like an in-between logo. Uh, and we're going to work with a <laughs> designer uh, who's going to rebrand the project. Uh, so I don't know how familiar everybody is with the design world, uh, but I've sourced uh, a lot of names and I uh, cross-checked a lot of people like on their schedule and uh, availability uh, and ended up uh, picking Ben Pierrot, uh, who recently did uh, Zora. I don't know uh, if you guys know that. It's a cool project. Uh, recommend checking out. Uh, and essentially he both had time, uh, but also is very uh, fit for this uh, like project, I believe, because he really focuses on the foundations of a brand without locking you in too much into uh, like a like a box, uh, which is kind of not what you want in this phase of startup, uh, like a DAO startup, which we are. Uh, so we want to be as flexible as possible, but still have uh, a foundation to reach uh, when we start to create front end and start to create uh, graphics for social and uh, all that kind of thing. Uh, and that's scheduled for in two weeks. So not next Monday, but the Monday after, uh, I'll be sitting down with him uh, for a week straight, uh, working on the rebrand and it should be done by the end of the week, uh, if I'm not dead. Uh, so that's uh, <laughs> that's exciting stuff. And that's about it for my so i wanted to open it up again to uh, any ideas that anyone has regarding anything that we've talked about yeah can you guys hear me right yes sir yeah all right so um there seems to be agreement that we want to increase the punk basic liquidity and i was just wondering uh like practically how much eth are how much eth do we think would be the right amount um, so yeah, I'll jump in on that one. Um, I, it, it's a tough call um, because I'm totally in favor of increasing punk basic liquidity. I think that's a, a really important pool. Uh, so like for the time being and temporarily, I'm totally in favor with that. But uh, long term, I'm hoping that we can address that problem by creating like uh, that aggregator I was talking about, right? Which would actually draw liquidity directly from Larva Labs and OpenSea in addition. So um, yeah, I think long term, like we'll be able to solve that problem without having to actually put a lot of ease towards it. Uh, but in the, in the short term, um, right now, I think I think it's something like only like 20 ETH is in that pool. I mean, personally, I'd be fine like, like doing like 10 times that or more, uh, but we only have so much ETH. Um, and a lot of it is is going towards NFTX liquidity right now. But um, on the side of using Larva Labs, integrating that, that would only work on the, the buy side, right? It's on the sell side. Yes, you are right. Um, that's true. Uh, that's absolutely true. And I, like I, I am hoping that in the future we'll be able to um, enable better trading strategies so that people can essentially make like limit orders on actual NFT mm -hmm. crypto funds. Um, I think there's actually another project that's doing this now, at, at least one other project. Um, but yeah, like our platform is, is really well suited for basically, um, it's basically like, kind of like Kyber, but for NFTs, right? So that like professional market makers, um, but we're not there yet. Uh, it would be cool though one day. But uh, yeah, in the meantime, you're totally right that the sell, that wouldn't help for selling. So 
um, we would still probably want to put like 200 ETH towards it at least. I, I don't know. What are you thinking in terms of numbers? So, so what I was going to say is uh, initially when we thought of liquidity, we thought we were going to launch all the D2 funds relatively quickly. So we do have ETH to put towards it right now if we like look into it and think it's not going to cost us ETH in treasury. And uh, what I was going to say is, so in the short term, we can do that. And then in the medium term, we can have farming incentives. So other people can offer their own liquidity towards that. And then in the long term, uh, we can go with what Alex was saying. And if we build more products over time and build a more efficient market for NFTs, we would also attract liquidity just by itself without incentives. I mean, the incentives would be the, the better market. I think if we're short, we're short on ETH, it might be worth considering uh, maybe taking a little bit of the ETH that we have in the NFTX pair, because currently that's where most of the ETH is. And uh, like depending on whether we think there's enough liquidity in the in the in the sushi, maybe it could be a good idea to take it, take some from there. Yeah, another one would be uh, sushi rewards, which uh, we might start to accumulate uh, through onsen. Uh, that's another like if if we get on the onsen program, that's another way to like get a bigger treasury to then use as liquidity over time. But that won't be there next week, of course. Yeah. Um, does does Adidas have anything they want to mention quickly? Or? Uh, yeah. On um, on uh, Chop Chop, you mentioned the tutorial and the voiceover. I might have. I know a person that does a professional um, voiceover video. So if we have a script for the voiceover, I can inquire the cost, and I am more than happy to spot this. Uh, to begin with, because we need to do this as soon as possible. So so we can talk about this in the content coordination in the server, if mm -hmm. this be. And uh, yeah, if you guys are interested, I can I can provide you with the, a link to a voiceover that has been done for a, a project that I, I'm still working with. And yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you guys are happy with it, then I can inquire with the cost and then get on with it. Yeah, makes sense. All right. Awesome. Um, that, that's great. Um, and um, back to the, the question of liquidity quickly. Um, it's probably going to be tough for us to settle on actual numbers during a call. Um, I will say that the, the we have a number of other D1 pools right now. So we have like the punk female pool, uh, punk attribute for all those. And we're, we're actually thinking of getting rid of those pools because they're not entirely necessary. Um, since the punk token itself, like that punk core pool actually provides liquidity for them as well. Um, so we could, you know, in theory, move some of that D1 liquidity for those other punk tokens into the punk basic token if we think that's more essential. Uh, but yeah, we should probably, uh, unless people have like just general comments they want to make still, um, probably start a thread on the forum. Yeah, I, I was about to say that... Um both State and Adidas. So I think State, you've already made a, a thread about this, but uh, like you can make a, a more formal one basically. And like we can talk more about specifications and how to implement this uh, based on what's already occurred and like what we can remove from existing liquidity. And uh, as Chop was saying, if we remove liquidity and we get on the Onsen menu, we would actually probably lose money uh, because we'd be yeah. getting less sushi rewards. So we, I mean, that's also something that has to be considered. Um. Well, actually, actually, since we're like most of the the liquidity, we won't lose sushi because, like, it's a fixed amount of sushi, and not yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Yeah, I guess it depends on which which pool is getting more trading volume. Yeah, that's that's right. Because mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's clearly if we have less liquidity, we probably have less trading volume. But yeah, it's a it's a balance. But if I can add something on the back to the punk uh, proposed split is that I, I've been in favor of it, but now that we gained some traction and that CoinGecko listed it, I, I'm wondering if it's it's a good idea to, mm -hmm. to I, um, change I the price. I don't think it's necessary. I think it's an arbitrary change, but it's, it has to be discussed. Like I, I, don't, I don't think I have an informed choice. Um, I actually would like to 
because after I spoke on it, I, I started getting distracted while Chop was presenting because I was thinking about it. Um, and I was thinking, you know, we there, we do have this issue because like D1 funds, we don't want to do a split because um, D1 funds, like the price feed is actually useful. So for example, like Autoglyphs, we have the Glyph fund. That's a D1 fund. Um, and that price feed is actually useful because it basically tells the floor price of Autoglyphs. Um, mm -hmm. So we don't want to mess with it. But you know, that fund, it's also like a, a top level fund in a sense, because there is no D2 autoglyph fund. So glyph is the main autoglyph fund, right? And I'm hoping glyph gets really popular. I think it's, it has potential to go like way up. Um, but so if we're not going to do a split on glyph, like that means the glyph price right now is probably around 10 ETH. Um, so I don't know, like, does it really make sense for us to start doing stock splits on like Punk and Axie and Kitty so that people can have this high number, but then they have this, they like, they're so like, but then they still have this glyph, which is accurately priced. I, it does seem a little bit arbitrary to me. Um, I also think like, you know, like right now the Punk price is supposed to be around 24 ETH. I think that's like a pretty good price to have a, a punk fund. It's like, you know, if I if I was like some rich millionaire and I was like, hey, I want to buy like an average, a slightly above average crypto punk, um, you know, like how much would I be looking to spend? And it's, it's probably around that much. So like in that sense, I think that that's kind of actually a useful price feed too. Um, but that's, that's my take. Um, does anyone else have any thoughts? Uh, Addy Dust? I uh, yeah. yeah, I'm going back to the liquidity. Um, I don't think it's a really good idea to remove any liquidity, especially being a, a core uh, a, a team member, because that's going to look bad towards the community, regardless uh, how it's done. So I reckon we should find other means to present the funds for for future liquidity instead of removing any liquidity to use that ether for something else. Yeah, I mean uh like okay I'll, I'll touch both subjects so on the liquidity side um it's really a like a, a an answer you can't really give at the moment because you we would be answering on current demand and right now if you look at current demand the highest demand is on nftx and uh, uh getting a, a spot inside the dow or at least inside of governance of the dow without having crazy slippage. So liquidity at the moment for the NFTX pair is super important because if bigger players uh, want to enter and we don't have liquidity or sufficient liquidity, they either have to get into it over the next, uh, like next months, which is kind of against uh, governance, you know? So they can't like partake in governance because they can't buy into it, which would be bad uh but mo like maybe two months from now the focus is way more on the uh like punk basic uh pool or the xc mystic 2 because as X -C mystic 2 uh investing became super popular so i think we should at least my perspective on uh what we should include in the governance talks is that we remain flexible to what the market demands liquidity for uh, right now, I think the market demands most liquidity for the governance tokens because people want to partake in governance, but it might be different uh, two months from now. So maybe there's a lot of need for liquidity to uh, to a certain pool. And I think we, as a DAO, should then like answer to that uh, by rebalancing liquidity uh, accordingly. Yeah, I think I, I agree. And if I can give a little bit of context behind like why I, I said that is that let's say I, if I think about it more as a shareholder of the DAO and I, if I think that NFTX is currently really undervalued and I happen to, to do, mm -hmm. like is kind of making it so that it's kind of an offer to sell our, uh, our NFTX in the treasury for, for ETH, but it's possible that we don't actually think that this is the, the fair price. So... Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, but I, I do agree that I do agree that it's probably not the right move to to remove liquidity for right. now at least. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. And on the stock split, uh, I I'm kind of impartial on whether or not it's 
uh, useful to stock split the uh, wrapper of the D2 uh, fund uh, because in the end it's an index fund so it, it has no relation to the actual uh, any actual pricing of a NFT uh, or a category of NFTs uh, that are underlaying uh, so for punk for instance uh, like the, the price of a wrapped punk token uh, has no correlation to any uh, crypto punk it's just a combination of the basket uh, which makes up the price uh, which I feel makes sense uh, and I I mean like if you if you look at uh, punk it might be uh, uh, psychologically overpriced at the moment because it's like a high uh, value token it rose up uh, uh, largely when it listed on sushi and it might when all the uh, floor punks uh, raise in value over time so it might end up being worth 100k uh, one day um, that's a good problem to have and we can still reconsider like uh, uh, splitting then if it uh, works in the favor of the DAO so if more people are interested in investing in an index fund that's lower priced then why not? Uh, but right now, I don't think it's really uh, a good allocation of time to think about uh, such a thing, to be honest. Yeah, that's personally my main worry, that it's like really not efficient, especially mm -hmm. because it's arbitrary. Yeah. And also, to, to go back to liquidity, uh, so Alex, you said there's about 20 Ether for Punk Basic. So, I mean, I think removing another 20 or 50 or so Ether is not going to be noticeable on the sushi swap pool yes yeah, so, so right now um, the punk basic pool is still on balancer right now um okay so i i got it like we gotta ask ourselves like how many people are actually out there thinking wow i'd really like to own a bunch of punk basic right now um and i don't think there's that many I think there's probably a lot of people that were, are like, wow, I'd like to own the punk token, which combines mm -hmm. punk basic with other um, tokens. But I don't think there's that many people that are like specifically interested in this punk basic token. That being said, I do still think um, having liquidity for it is important um, for other reasons. Like, for instance, anyone who uses a crypto punk um, in DeFi for collateral, that's going to have a liquidation price, which is equal to punk basic. Um, et cetera, et cetera. So it could get lots of volume through other means. But yeah, right now in terms of us actually giving our like initial user base what they want, um, I, I don't I don't think there's it's probably more I, I mean I know I know who actually wants the punk basic liquidity because I'm I'm one of the people. It's people that are sitting on all these crypto punks, right? And want to sell them. <laughs> um, and it, like that that is a, a nice feature of it, right? Uh, but I, I don't think there's actually that many users out there that are, are feel like they're missing out. So like the punk basic mostly only exists for punk at the moment. Uh, yeah, just my two cents on that. Well, I, I just want to interject before I, I let uh, State interrupt because I think he, I, I'm going to agree with what he's going to say. But uh, so mm -hmm. I'm I actually would be a user of punk basic even though I I currently don't have punks, uh, but. Um, so I actually see punk like the, the floor punks as another index for punks, even though they're not an index because they are carrying different attributes. And uh, over time, like that's actually a really good way to make the market more efficient. So I, I do think we should push that as much as the index. Like yeah. I, and I, I really do think there are users for that. I agree. Cause like uh, most of the punks belong to punk basic and uh, we want, um, uh, arbitrage to be as efficient as possible so uh because punk is a like uh, it's a d2 token so like uh, it's kind of much harder to uh arbit and um a lot of um because myself i prefer holding actually holding punk basic instead of punk index because um, for some reasons so uh i believe that um um, incentivizing punk basic might as well as a, um, a, a it would make sense to um, incentivize punk basic as well for like um, arbitraging 
reason. Interesting. Um, okay, no, that's that's really interesting that both you guys like it. Um, how about okay, state next, and then Scott entrepreneur afterwards. Well, I think everyone's uh, said my opinion on Funk Basics, so I'll just put a point about because um, you were talking maybe just the directly integrating Larva Labs, but another good um, reason why we'd want like ETH liquidity is let's say we want Punk Basic or Punk to be adopted on lending platforms. I don't. I think like having if the if the platforms can see there's ETH available to sell into if there's a liquidation that's gonna that's gonna be way more effective for them to accept it. Yeah, a hundred a hundred percent, and that's one reason I'm glad that we have a surplus of Punk Basic because um, we may even be able to become a lender um, of some sort in the future. Uh, Scott, do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, I just wanted to echo the uh, on the other side of the punk basic, where I, I'm not as concerned about which punk I'm holding, but definitely want to to be. And so I'm happy to provide liquidity on the other side of that, I guess. Um, same with the, uh, I lost the rest of it, but just wanted to echo that. <laughs> yeah, no, all good. Um, yeah, I'm like that too. I, I'm happy to provide liquidity on the sell side of punk basic. So um, yeah, it's interesting that other people really like that fund. Um, I think it's less confusing for mm -hmm. users versus the punk to try and explain like this is backed by a series of punks uh, versus the, the punk basic. It's like you at least can redeem one to one. Um, maybe that's the uh, hold yeah, up, no, ab absolutely. Um, I think you're right. And that's like what I said earlier today, which is like, I, I feel totally comfortable holding large amounts of D1 tokens right now, but I'm still don't think people should be aping into the, the D2 tokens. So um, yeah, that's, that's really cool. Um, I'm glad to hear that people, that people like that. And just one other thing I was going to mention, because um, I just thought of it, is that, you know, like, like Scott was saying, the, the D2 fund, it is hard for people to understand. Um, and it's going to be a challenge for us to kind of convey this intuitively without too much um, like data dumping happening on users. So I, I, I think that, yeah, like the consensus seems to be let's keep punk how it is. From a, totally, from a totally educational point of view, I think it's easier to understand punk when it's priced at 24 ETH because that's literally the average of its subparts, right? Um, and by adding in a stock split, that's just another thing that people try and have, have to yeah. try and wrap their head around. Um, and it, it takes up time that, and we're busy right now. So yeah, let's just keep punk how it is. Um, and then I think the, the liquidity discussion, we can probably move to the forum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, the last thing I wanted to mention was uh, I also think we should work on uh, pushing uh, Chop as a core contributor because uh, he's provided a lot of value, I think more than anyone else, uh, other than you, Alex, obviously. So uh, I, I don't think anyone disagrees with that. So I think we can work on that uh, next. Does anyone have any thoughts? And um, I'll, I'll, I'll also work on notes for the call for what we discussed. So like uh, people can refer the, to that so they can work on the next discourse proposals and or just discussions. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I was just finishing off um, a document this morning, a draft with um, with Scott Lewis about trying to get CHOP hired officially. So I can share that um, on the forum. I guess I can post it as a draft proposal and then uh, once everyone takes a look at it, we can move it.